What's up guys, the RC Crawler King here, and today is my first video of 2019, and I've got some exciting news. I just bought a Gladius Mini, which I'm going to be using this year to go recover that drone that I lost in that lake down in Lethbridge. I'm going to be doing an unboxing, a quick review of it today, so I hope you guys enjoy. Guys, first things first, let's have a look at the packaging and see how it held up during transport. Here's the two boxes I received in the mail. One is the accessory backpack that you can get as an option, and the top box is the actual underwater ROV itself. I know I want to look at that one first. Some of the things I noticed on arrival are this damage here on this corner. I noticed a slight blemish here on the side of the box as well as some fairly decent dents in the bottom side of the box here and here. All in all though, having come from all the way across the ocean, um, it's not too bad to be 100% honest. So let's go ahead and open this bad boy up and see what it looks like on the inside. Uh, uh, uh. Alrighty guys, here's the Gladius Mini. I'm excited to get into this box. So let's go ahead and open it up and have a look at what's inside. Alrighty, so here's the contents. Let's go ahead and start by having a look at the instructions that are included. So in this bag, you will get your documentation for what you have just purchased. So there is a quick start guide here, the actual user manual here, as well as a warranty card and a packing list. Inside the bag, Chasing Innovations was also generous enough to include spare parts. You will get two extra rubber caps to cover the connectors as well as two extra thumb screws for the controller. They've also included extra screws for the submarine itself and a bunch of rubber O-rings for the connectors themselves. Next up, let's have a look at this towel. Chasing Innovation was nice enough to include this super soft towel to wipe off the Gladius Mini when you're done using it. Next up, let's go ahead and have a look at the controller. You got your two joysticks for controlling the submarine's movement itself. They feel very, very good. They're not too stiff, they're not too soft. I'd say they did a really good job here making sure these feel quite nice. In the middle here, you'll find your on and off switch. This button in the top left corner is to change your dive modes. The first mode will be stabilized and the second mode will be depth lock mode. On the right hand side here, we have a unlock and lock button to basically arm and disarm the drone. You also have a spot where you can attach a tether around your neck so you have no chance of dropping your controller. On the top side of the controller here, we basically have R1 and L1 buttons. Um, the one on the right hand side here has a video and picture button on it which will start and stop the recording as well as this roller slider just above it, which is going to actually control the angle that the submarine sits in the water. And the roller on the left hand side is going to control the brightness up and down for the LED lights. This other trigger on the left hand side here is going to switch between recording and photo modes. On the bottom here, we have a micro USB port for charging the controller itself. As well, on the back side, we have another one of those thumb screws, which is going to hold the mounting arm in place. The mounting arm attaches pretty simply. You just put the two tabs in the top, slide it down, and then simply put in the thumb screw on the back side to hold it in place. Once the arm's attached, you're going to need to attach the holder for your mobile device. Simply loosen the collar, put the ball inside the back, and tighten the collar back down. That's going to allow you to see what your drone is seeing and control it at the same time. 
let's go ahead and look at the base station. This here is essentially a communication dock between the drone itself and your controller. This is basically a wireless hub that all communications will go through. You can see here one of those rubber caps that they gave you extra of is covering up the connector to prevent any water from going inside there. The on and off switch is located here on the bottom side. As well, there's four silicone rubber feet to keep this thing fixed in place wherever you might sit it. There's also a reset button here. This is to choose between your 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz operating modes. On the side of the base station, we have two ports. One is an SD card slot that allows for storage expansion. And beside the SD card slot, we also have an HDMI port, which is used to live feed video to an external monitor. The four LED lights are as follows. The top one is an indicator light for communications between the ROV itself. The next light is the five gigahertz LED light. The next light is the 2.4 gigahertz LED light. And the last one is your battery status indicator. This light will be green if the battery is above 75%. It will be blue if it's between 75 to 25%, and it will be red if it's below 25%. The battery capacity in the base station is a 2,500 milliamp hour battery, which Chasing Innovation states will give you greater than six hours of runtime depending on the environment. First cable we have here is just simply a USB-A to micro USB cable. Next up, we have the power adapter for charging both the submarine and the base station itself. Here is the charging cable for the wall adapter. Okay, so that's everything that's on the top of this foam packaging here. Let's go ahead and take the first section off. And let's go ahead and have a quick look at the tether before we jump into the good stuff. So this is the tether that is included with the submarine. I went ahead and got the optional 100 meter tether, which is an additional 50 meters longer than the one that you would get normally. I did have to pay extra for this tether, but I can tell you it is quite long. There is tons of cable here, and you can get this thing as far out as you'd be comfortable with. I do like the design of this tether holder, but I kind of mixed on it still. I mean, Chasing Innovations really went for portability when they made this submarine, which is exactly what this tether cable holding system does. Whereas with their old Gladius, they had a actual spool that was able to unreal and wind in the cable, which is very nice because you didn't just have all this cable laying everywhere on the ground, which can become quite a mess. The connector ends are pretty straightforward. They're impossible to plug in backwards, which is great. They have an aluminum thread to them with a collar that will lock in place to keep any water from entering the connectors. I was told that the cable is very strong and would be able to pull the Gladius onto the water without any problems in case your battery were to die. Let's go ahead and get to the good stuff. Here is the actual drone itself. Oh boy. I must say this thing's got some serious weight to it. It's pretty heavy. It looks really cool. I like how it's got some fins. Looks just like a fish or a shark would. It's got the connector here on the top. They've angled it back a little bit, which is great. It doesn't stick straight up like the old Gladius did. Another one of those rubber covers is covering it to protect any water from getting in there during transport. The unique feature about the Gladius Mini is that there are five propellers in total, two up front, one in the rear, and then you have the actual thrusters back here. Of course, all these motors allow for extra stabilization to keep this thing super stable in the water. And I must say, on of any other ROV I've seen, the footage on the Gladius Mini is some of the top-notch footage I've seen on the internet. Here on the side, you can see what kind of battery is included in here. It's a 3S lithium polymer battery, 5,000 milliamp hours. Looking at the front, we can see the 4K Ultra HD camera and the two really bright LED lights. Some of the camera specifications on the submarine are 
an ISO range of 100 to 3200. It has an aperture of f3, a maximum field of view of 95 degrees. The maximum resolution of a still image is 12 megapixels. For video resolutions, you have Full HD 920 by 1080 at 30 FPS, 60 FPS, and 120 FPS. As well, there is 4K 30 FPS recording mode. The sensors inside the drone include a 3-axis gyroscope, acceleration, and compass, as well as a depth sensor and a temperature sensor. The LED lights on the submarine itself are 1,200 looms and have a color temperature between 4,000 Kelvin to 5,000 Kelvin. On the bottom we can see where the fresh water module is mounted. They also come with a seawater module which you would install if you're using it in the ocean. I have my buddy Cade making a custom printed 3D arm that's going to stretch out to the front to be able to go recover my drone that I lost in the lake when I was flying down in Lethbridge. It's going to have two different attachments for the arm, one being a hook and one being a magnetic end, which I'm going to be able to grab the drone from the bottom of the lake with and bring it back to safety. Once you do manage to get connected to the app, there are some really nice features in this. There's a virtual compass down here in the bottom left corner that displays the real-time movement of the underwater drone itself. You have your depth gauge here. You have your brightness setting here. This shows how bright the lights are. Along the bottom, we have a lock and unlock button that arms and disarms the drone, just as the unlock and lock button does on the controller. In the center, we have our speed setting, low, medium, and high, as well as the type of mode that we are in. The two modes are depth lock mode as well as stabilize mode. Also displayed down here is the temperature reading as well as the inclinometer that shows the angle of the submarine to where you're standing. Over here in the top right corner we have some useful telemetry data. If you click on the battery icon more detailed information is brought up in regards to the battery's current status. We can see the current white balance setting displayed here, as well as the ISO setting, the bitrate setting, the FPS setting, and the current resolution that we're recording in, as well as the built-in memory capacity on the drone itself. Up here in the top center, we have a compass heading. As you can see, when I turn the drone back and forth, the compass heading updates in real time. Over on the left-hand side, there's a tab that brings up our choices between VR, live stream, using a virtual handle if you don't want to use the controller, and an option to turn the lights on and off. On the right hand side of the app, we have the stop and start recording button. We have a switch between video and photo mode button to pick the two different types of recording that we want to do. We also have a video setting button underneath which allows you to manually adjust camera settings. You can change the ISO, the white balance, the color tone, the contrast, sharpness, and even flip the image if you'd like. In order to access video settings, we have to make sure that we're in the video mode. Switching over to video mode, we can now adjust the video settings. At the top here, we have our resolution between 1080p and 4K. We have the frames per second that we want to pick. For 4K, we are limited to 30 FPS only, and in 1080p, we can do 30, 60, or 120 FPS, which is really good. As well, down here, we can change the bitrate. This button here allows the user to turn off the DV function, which works by reducing exposure time to minimize image drag. However, it only works in video mode. And the last setting here is the preview parameter. We can change the stream rate as well as the video quality that we're receiving of our live feed. 
Under the Photos tab, we can change settings such as the type of image captured. We can do JPEGs, DNG, or capture both at the same time. We can do burst photos up to a maximum of five photos. We can also change the shutter speed. You have automatic or manual choosing, as well as the preview parameter bitrate and the quality of the live feed that you will receive. Over here in the top left corner, we have a back button to go back to the home screen and change to reviewing footage mode if you'd like to do so, as well as a settings icon, which when pressed brings up the settings menu. The system icon allows you to change system settings. Here are some of them here. The ROV tab allows you to calibrate the ROV as well as what units you want it to be measuring in. The camera icon allows you to format the hard drive on the underwater drone as well as change the streaming type. The handle icon allows you to change your controller settings as well as a exponential curve if you're used to flying regular drones. I know I went straight to using the custom key layout and I was able to put the keys in the correct locations to make it feel a lot more like a actual aerial drone. If you leave these two icons down here and don't assign them to any buttons, you will still be using the roller slider on the back side of the controller to raise and lower the bow of the submarine. There's also a menu to assign custom buttons. If you want a certain button on the controller to do a specific function, you can change that in here. All right, guys, that submarine is pretty sweet, but we still have this backpack to get into, so let's go ahead and open it up. Alrighty guys, here's the backpack itself. This is an accessory you buy at checkout if you'd like to have something a little bit more portable in terms of transporting your drone around to use at different lakes and oceans. Looking at the backpack, we see the Chasing Innovations logo on the front, as well as a nice hard cover to protect anything that you put inside. On the top, we see Chasing Innovations put a nice foam handle here with some nice stitching to hold it in place. There's also a secondary handle, which I'm not too sure why it's there, but just in case you wanted two handles, there is two. Looking at the back of the backpack that will rest against your back when you're carrying it, we have two nice padding spots here with nice foam for your shoulders, as well as a nice lumbar kind of support at the bottom here. The genius thing that Chasing did here though, is that they made this into a pouch, which I found perfectly fits the towel, which is one of the softest things around. So I really think this is a really smart idea for them to do that. At the bottom of the bag, we have these two pads here, which is gonna help big time in protecting the bottom of the bag when you go to set it down anywhere. I know with any of my other backpacks that the first thing to wear on them is the bottom of the bag from setting it down over and over. Before we jump into the first pouch, just want to talk about the zipper. The zippers are very nice, they feel very durable, they're quite large, and they also have a nice rubber protecting cover over top of them to help protect as much as possible against any splashing that might occur if you, say, have this bag on a boat with you. Opening up the first pouch. We are going to find our accessory pouch. In here, Chasing Innovations provided a cover. I find this cover helps slide things into the bag easier, and it also gives you a spot to lay things down onto. All the accessories that come with the drone fit inside this dense foam, and all those accessories fit inside this first pouch of the bag. There's also a secondary pouch inside of there, where you can put your mobile device. The next pouch that I'm going to be opening is the primary pouch where the drone itself and the tether can be found. Once open, you'll see that the submarine and the tether are very well secured in here. Nothing is gonna be moving around 
and Chasing Innovations was really thinking about this too because they included some waterproof drawstring bags to cover up both the tether and the drone after you've finished using it in a lake or the ocean. This is especially useful because these things are going to be absolutely soaking wet when you go to put them away. It's impossible to try and get all the water off of both of these things with the towel that they've included. So these bags are really going to help protect water from soaking into the foam padding that's included inside the bag to protect these items during transport. Pulling the drone off to the side, we can also see Chasing Innovations has included even more padding in the bottom. This is to contour the submarine better and ensure that it's not going to be moving around at all. You can see that the connector here is going to sit right inside this crevice here, which is going to ensure that this does not get damaged, especially since it is one of the main protruding elements on the drone. Putting the drone off to the side, the tether is located right here. Simply pull it out, open up the drawstring bag, and you have access to your tether. I would highly recommend you get this backpack at checkout if you plan on traveling around with your underwater drone. Alrighty guys, that sums up the review of the Gladius Mini. I think the submarine's pretty cool, but I'm even more excited to see what kind of cool things we're going to be able to do with it this year. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you guys are probably a little curious as to how exactly I'm going to use this thing to get my drone back on the lake. If you guys are excited to see that, make sure to subscribe. Don't forget to be fancy, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.